Hi, welcome to Real Magic Review. My name is Steve Faulkner and this is my review of Canon by David Regal. Before we do this, the usual message is like and subscribe. That's very important. Comment. Love it when I get my comments. And check out onlinemagic.co. That is, as the title suggests, my online membership site has been going oh, way too many years, over 10 years, but it has never got any negative uh, criticism. I ask for it, I ask for feedback, everybody loves it. Check out the Trustpilot reviews, there are over 800 videos now. Rory Adams recently said that I was the best teacher in the world and that you should check out my courses. And that is someone that knows. So, uh, and check out his one ahead, of course. Uh, newsletter on Substack. So, have a look at that. Any questions, comment below or email me steve at onlinemagic.co. It's 9 99 a month. You get special guests, live sessions every week. Well, I haven't been one for a couple of weeks because I've been away. Um, and you can ask me anything and I share everything I know. It's a proper insider's thing, but for any level. So have a look at that, onlinemagic.co. Forgot to mention, please have a look at the podcast, uh, Steve Fawn's Magic Show. Because I've been away for the whole of Christmas and New Year, I haven't recorded another one recently, but the one with Dave Forrest, or oh, they've all been great for very different reasons. They've all been very different. The one with Dave Forrest, it's my podcast and I've listened to it quite a lot. I just find it so, him, not me, I hate my own voice, but I uh, found it so enjoyable. So thanks for your great feedback on that. Do check out Steve Faulkner's Magic Show wherever you get your podcast. And of course, the links will be below. Okay, so Canon by David Regal. So I first saw this and I'm going to be totally honest, it didn't interest me that much because for me, I saw a card in an envelope. Now I already do, in a car, do a card in an envelope, sealed envelope in my wallet. So many people do it with the bonzelopes. Um, I'm, when I look for a card to impossible location, I look for something completely different that's gonna feel like add something to my repertoire. But don't forget, I've been doing this for 30 years. So I've got a lot. So it, it's got to really grab me, but. Such an idiot, on the trailer, it does focus actually on the card to box, which I didn't mention in the review. I'm such a terrible reviewer. Um, I don't know what I saw, but I thought it was all about the envelope. So card to box, you can um, make a tiny gimmick. It's, it's so easy. And you can do the card on the box routine that he does. So yeah, you can do the card to box as well, which is the main routine on trailer, Steve. Vanishing sent it to me and I thought I'll have a look at it and it was way more than I thought and I know I say this about a lot of things and I think it's really important to know that trailers and it's an honest trailer but can cannot give you the full story of course because it's magic. Now this the envelope and the way the envelope envelope I always go between the two tell me what one's right I think I did google it once and I think they're both right. The envelope itself is <laughs> I've just changed it again is of course part of it and it is part of this routine but it's a lot more than that and it's a lot more versatile than i thought it would be so first of all the routine if done is a a prediction now that's important so i started by saying it's a card to impossible location because that's where my brain goes it's not it's a prediction the card doesn't go from anywhere and end up with anywhere uh, end up anywhere it's a prediction you have that card they meant name a card you go through the deck quite openly you put the card on the table, there's a prediction. There is a routining that he has about it being a contract. He's got a confidential sticker on the thing. And he takes the card out and that's the prediction. So that's where it does differ for, from the initial thing of, oh, I don't need another one of them. But it's still a card in an envelope. Or a box. Whether it's a prediction or not for me. But what's really interesting about this is the system, is the deck itself. Now, this is a gimmick deck. I'm sure it's okay to say this. And a gimmicked envelope. And I'm sure it's okay to say that too. There's some clever stuff going on in both of those. First of all, the envelope is, has got some really nice things. You can show it apparently ungimmicked and clearly before you've, as you've got everything ready just before you do the reveal. There's a very good way of doing that and it covers the gimmick itself. I'm not going to go into what it is. Uh, it reminded me a little bit of sort of clarity box, that kind of thing. It's a, it's a different method, but it, it has, has the same kind of feel. Really clever, really good. And as he says, you can make them up yourself if you want. Once you've done that, you can customize them as you can. The next thing, which is the deck. Now, the deck is gimmicked to, uh, to, the, to the max. 
didn't want to say that. I was looking for a more sophisticated thing to say that, that make me not, made me, I can't talk. Anyway, <laughs> really gimmicked and it does some cool stuff. What it does really is it enables you to do what would usually, which is what we want from a gimmick deck, right? Usually be maybe a little bit cagey and slighty and difficult and take years of practice very openly, very cleanly and without palming and stuff like that. It's really clever and it allows you to, again, openly show the card, say you've named that one, right? We're gonna put that one there and then do what you need to do to pull it out of the envelope as it's still there. So first of all, that's great, it's a great trick. Now if you're not jaded and old like me, you probably don't have hundreds of ways to pull your card out of an envelope. So that's great, really good. And it's a nice parlor thing, it's a nice presentation. You've got the envelope says the thing on the front, confidential. Obviously, you don't have to do the presentation that he does. I think there are many ways of doing it and you'll just start thinking of different things you can do with it. And it's really clever and I really liked it. And I thought, oh, you could do that, that and that. Now, would I? Probably not because I'm a move monkey, slight heavy. I like doing all that stuff. And as he says, after he shows you the basic, and I have always worried where people say the basic handling because that makes it sometimes feel like it's inferior handling. I think it's a very good handling. I think it's a handling that a lot of people will do. But then if you want to start taking palming and copying and all those sort of things into it, then you can elevate that. Now, whether you want to do that and bring in a gimmick deck again is a total professional choice. My feeling as a professional is I don't want to start adding loads of decks, but if I'm doing a parlor show, then I can justify that because it's a lot easier to kind of switch things in and out. Talking of which, it is not examinable. Now, he says on his Color Changing Knives download which I watched a lot recently because I was performing his colour changing knives routine when I was away and it was getting such good reactions. Those of you that think our oh, knives are all old and silly like I thought, forget that, it just absolutely stormed every time. But like he says, no it's not examinable but you kind of sometimes kill that moment if you start handing things out and if the routine is strong enough and if it leaves them asking the right questions, the right questions, not necessarily the correct ones, the ones you want them to answer, ask, and you've, there's enough in there to kind of close those doors and not make them think of certain things, then there's less chance of them asking and it doesn't kill that moment. For me, I don't think that'll happen. I think there is enough stuff in here because the card's on the thing, it's not like you've taken it and put it somewhere. There's no way you could have known what card they were gonna choose. I think all that stuff is covered and it's all in the routining. And I think there's some really, really useful stuff in this of going, why does that make that stronger and not just like a card to impossible location? And what else can I do with this? And there is a lot more you could do with it. One of the things I liked about this and the ideas I had was that you could have, because without practice, if you don't really, really work on this, it could look a little bit cozy when you're getting the thing. You've got to be a little bit careful. Now, of course, with rehearsal, rather than practice, I think, I think this is more rehearsed than choreography. And the choreography is really nicely built into this. Every move is justified, which is what we all love. With that, I've forgotten where I was because I've got ADHD. With that, the what I thought to sort of not justify that, but I thought a nice idea would be to stop having that thing of, which I sometimes don't like of, there's an envelope, you know what's gonna happen at the end of this, let's go through the motions. And again, I think with routining, that isn't necessarily the case. You can build loads of entertainment into that. But what I liked is this idea I had where you could do something with the envelope first of all, whether it's another sort of prediction, a non-card thing, because I think there's something about this being a big envelope with one card in it that I, I, I thought, they, they, I want something else in there. But then if they think something else is in there, they'll think that's part of the method. And then I thought, right, you could have a bit in the show when you get something out the envelope and you almost kind of give away you've made a mistake. Oh, you, know, you saw something else in there. Um, let's forget about that for now. Almost like they've seen something they shouldn't. And then you do the thing, you do whatever you do with whatever you've got out of the envelope. And then later, so I mentioned there was something else in the envelope. Yeah, that, have a look and this is your card. So you've got that reason to kind of have a longer envelope, bring something else out of it, and then bring that card out of it later. And I think that's a really, I liked that. And I don't know why I liked it, but I did. <laughs> so that might not make any sense. And sorry, David, if you're watching this, you're probably going, what's he talking about? But yeah, I, li I like using the, the envelope for more than one thing to get rid of that thing for me of going card, long envelope, it felt like it should have something else in it. And I think you could build loads of stuff into maybe keep going back to it. Um, not with the same trick, but for different reasons. And then justify this whole thing of confidentiality. I like the thea theatricality of that, of going, oh, I've got this thing throughout the whole show. And it's not like your killer finale is getting a card out of it, but there's something 
in that, I think. As with Clarity Box, I like the box that it's got the sign on it, oh, all that. I think it's, it can really kill a routine where if you just go, right, there's a thing, choose a card, and you know, it's going to come out of there, isn't it? Rather than and use it. And I think this is, even though it's just an envelope, it made me think of lots of things. <sighs> Bit waffly, this, isn't it? First one uh, in a few weeks, so sorry about that. I think it's good. I think it's versatile more than you think. I think there's the envelope idea is great. But if you do all that, don't write this off. I think there's, there's lots of nice things you can do with this deck. The deck is clever. I was wondering whether anybody's done this before. I couldn't find anything. Uh, it seems to be an original idea, and it's it's great. And it's not, again, if you think of gimmick decks, it's not what you think it's going to um, be if you want to take the rough with the smooth and all that kind of thing. So, I need being very clever. Any negatives, it's not going to be for everybody. It's another deck to carry around. It's another prop, the, of course, but I can't really think of anything else. It works. It's honest. It does what it says it's going to do, and you don't have to be a demon, sleight of hand, card uh, geek to be able to do this trick, which you can do without any palming whatsoever. Right. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Well done for staying to the end. Uh, thanks, Vanish Link, for sending this to me. Uh, some of you will see at the session convention, which is very exciting this year. The whole base camp thing is going on. I'll be part of that and we'll be doing the late night session. So if you're watching this before that, I'll see you there. Come and say hello. Please do. It'll be great. And I'll see you there. And if not, I will see you soon on here. And take care. Off you go. Have a look at the links below. And also have a look at onlinemagic.co. the session convention which is very exciting this year the whole base camp thing is going on I'll be part of that and we'll be doing the late night session so if you're watching this before that I'll see you there come and say hello please do it'll be great and I'll see you there and if not I will see you soon on here and take care off you go have a look at the links below and also have a look at onlinemagic.co